MTC. Q Hyper 11 Number 1. When Yasmin arrived at the conference site, she noisily greeted the first group she encountered. Yasmin. Everyone loves Yasmin's infectious enthusiasm and her obvious love of people. Yasmin. People were calling her over from all parts of the lobby, and consequently she ended up quite near the front of the line, heading into the main hall, for the start of the conference. She sat right in the middle of row 3 and put her bag down to reserve a seat for her good friend Richard, who would be arriving a bit later. Richard. She was still talking and greeting people as the hosts took the stage, and her excitement was fairly bubbling over, with a smile from ear to ear. The only things brighter than her smile were her clothes which helped her stand out from the very large crowd that had assembled for the conference. A little while later, Richard arrived. Richard. They hadn't seen each other for more than 36 hours, so they were long overdue for a big hug. 36. Isn't life great, she thought. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Q Hyper 11 Number 2. Whenever our urge is to fight a specific biological change, we should ask the following triplet of questions. Will our efforts have made much difference a few hundred years hence? If not, this means we are fighting a battle we will inevitably lose. Next, will our great-grandchildren's great-grandchildren be that bothered if the state of the world has been altered, given that they will not know exactly how it is today? If the answer to this second question is no, this means we are fighting battles we do not need to win. If change is inevitable, which it is, we should then ask a third question, how can we maximize the benefits that our descendants derive from the natural world? In other words, how can we promote changes that might be favorable to the future human condition, as well as avoid the losses of species that might be important in unknown ways in future? MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Q Hyper 11 Number 4. Darwin himself could scarcely have found a better example of the operation of natural selection than is provided by the way the mechanism of resistance operates. Darwin. Out of an original population, the members of which vary greatly in qualities of structure, behavior, or physiology, it is the tough insects that survive chemical attack. Spraying kills off the weaklings. The only survivors are insects that have some inherent quality that allows them to escape harm. These are the parents of the new generation, which, by simple inheritance, possesses all the qualities of toughness inherent in its forebears. Inevitably it follows that intensive spraying with powerful chemicals only makes worse the problem it is designed to solve. After a few generations, instead of a mixed population of strong and weak insects, there results a population consisting entirely of tough, resistant strains. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Q Hyper 11 Number 5. In daily life, processes constantly come in conflict as the objectives of one process directly oppose the objectives of another. For example, every workday, millions of individuals climb into their cars to start the process known as going to work. For many, the primary objective of this process is to arrive at work at the proper time. If the individual feels that this primary objective may not be achieved, then speed is at a premium and other objectives fall by the wayside. This individual then runs into a significant conflict with another objective. Municipalities have developed a series of processes intended to ensure achievement of their primary objective related to safe travel. Speed limits, stop signs, and traffic lanes all work together to frustrate the time-conscious traveler. The driver's objective, the need for speed, comes in direct conflict with the municipality's objective, the need for safety. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Q Hyper 11 Number 6. Academic work is by its nature never done, while flexibility of hours is one of the privileges of our work, it can easily translate into working all the time or feeling that one should. Mary Morris Heiberger and Julia Miller Vick note this paradox. Mary Morris Heiberger Julia Miller Vick. 
Despite their heavy workloads, academics have more freedom to structure their own time than practically anyone else in the economy. For some people, this is the great advantage of the career path, for others, it is a source of stress. Dot. Furthermore, given the time and money required to get a PhD and its uncertain economic returns, it is clear that most of us pursue an academic career for idealistic, rather than pragmatic, reasons. And while believing in what one does is a key aspect of job satisfaction, idealism also can lead to overwork. The irony is that the more committed we are to our vocation, the more likely it is that we will experience time stress and burnout. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Q Hyper 11 Number 7 The Arabic language doesn't have a single word for compromise, which some have said is the reason that Arabs seem to be unable to reach a compromise. Yet, the Arabic language does provide several ways to articulate the concept of compromise, the most common being an expression that translates in English to we reached a middle ground. Dot. This example illustrates codability, which refers to the ease with which a language can express a thought. When a language has a convenient word for a concept, that concept is said to have high codability. Thus, the existence of the word compromise gives that idea high codability in English. When a concept requires more than a single word for its expression, it possesses lower codability. It is accurate, then, to say that the idea of compromise has lower codability in Arabic than in English. However, having a phrase rather than a single word to express an idea does not mean that the idea is non-existent in a given culture, only that it is less easily put into the language code. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Q Hyper 11 Number 8. The ability to detect danger in the posture of others has been studied by the neuroscientist Beatrice Gelder. Beatrice Gelder. Her research has demonstrated that the brain of an observer reacts more powerfully to the body language of a person in a posture indicating fear than it does even to a fearful facial expression. Looks of fear can paralyze or, at least, evoke our own potent fear-based reactions. Yet, as powerful as facial expressions are in conveying danger, a person's uptight posture and furtive movements make us even more uncomfortable. Wouldn't you, too, be startled by the sudden recoiling of the hiker in front of you a split second before you heard the hissing of a coiled snake? This type of imitative behavior occurs throughout the animal world. If, for example, one bird in a flock on the ground suddenly takes off, all the other birds will follow immediately after, they do not need to know why. Fear displayed in behavior induces more intense responses from the observer than does fear shown on the face. MTC Good job! 